Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin has a whole ton of units for you to learn, so this video is intended to help you learn them a little bit quicker so you can better understand the game. This video is sponsored by Frontier Development, so thanks to them for that. Let us begin with... So your tier 1 hero for the Night Haunt, the Knight of Shrouds. He has the charge ability, which I'll be mentioning a lot in this video. It works as you can imagine. You charge forward at speed and you do a good bit of extra damage when you land on an enemy. He also has these two unique abilities, one of them a kind of damage spell, with also a little bit of self-preservation because it heals him, and the other more of a support ability meant to be used alongside his fellow troops. Increases their damage output and gives unstoppable. Unstoppable basically makes things immune to contact effects like stun and fear. He also has two upgrades that he can get, one in tier 1 giving him more damage to monsters and overall more range with his abilities, and another in tier 2 that'll increase his defense and attack damage, so overall it's all about just buffing him up and making him a powerful single entity. So the Knight of Shrouds, a melee hero that wants to get stuck in alongside its fellow troops. And then your tier 1 melee infantry, Chain Rasps. They're a damage dealer type unit, so good to get after most types of enemy. They have the charge ability, and it's also worth noting that all of these Night Haunt units have a kind of shield which gets depleted first before their health, and that will recharge when they're out of combat. As a result though, their health pool is generally pretty low, so once the shield's gone, they do kind of fall pretty quick. For their upgrades, they can have Wave of Terror, which increases damage with each nearby unit with Wave of Terror. There's a bunch of other units that can get Wave of Terror as well and do different things. So that's going to be handy if you group up your Chain Rasps. Or you can make them more of a kind of solo unit with Reinforce, which will heal them and reinforce them, which means bring their troops back to life over time. They also get affected in the Tier 2 by Overwhelming Torment, which will increase their health if you choose it. Then we have the Craven Throne Guard. These are your tier 1 ranged unit. Like all ranged units, they're pretty simple in their use, although they do have the Spectral Bolts ability, which they can fire at a target location, and if there's multiple units in that AoE, they will not only suffer reduced armor, but reduced movement speed for 15 seconds as well. They can be upgraded in the tier 1 with Wave of Terror, but it increases attack speed instead of damage, like the Chain Rasps, and you can intermingle those with each other so they can all buff each other. They kind of want to work together if you do take that, or you can increase their individual performance with a boost to attack damage and damage versus heroes. They're also another unit that's affected by Overwhelming Torment, an increase to their health. And that's not all, they also get a tier 3 buff potentially, which increases their max unit size, so ultimately their damage output. Very nice. Your tier 2 hero, the Guardian of Souls. This guy is basically your healer. He's also more of a ranged hero, so keep him out of the melee combat. He'll do his ranged attack. This is his heal ability, and that's just going to be useful in any kind of strategy or army that you bring. He can also get a tier 2 upgrade, Magical Domination. A passive ability creates a silencing aura that prevents enemy ability use, so that's pretty damn strong. Or you can just get more DPS with Spirit Drain, which increases his attack range and his damage against elite enemies. And if all that wasn't enough, he can also be upgraded in the tier 3 to be able to summon a Morngol. It is a temporary Morngol, it will die after like a minute or so, but still very nice, a great support hero. Then you have the Hex Wraiths. These are a cavalry type unit. They have three very useful abilities, a charge attack that will slow and damage enemy units that they pass through. They also have an ability that increases their movement speed and makes them hidden or invisible for 30 seconds so they can be a sneaky stealthy unit. And they have an ability that will cause fear to any units that are nearby, basically scaring them and making them run away. Very handy if you want to clear units off a point or maybe if you've got friendly units in bad matchups you can save them from. So a lot of utility and versatility with the Hex Wraiths. In tier 2, their charge ability can be upgraded to stun enemy units instead of slow them, and they're another unit affected by overwhelming torment, so you can increase their health. And then your final tier 2 option, the Maya Morn Banshees. These are more of a defensive support unit, as they have an ability called Spell Eater, which creates an aura of silence, so stops enemy abilities, reveals all enemy units, grounds flying units, and reduces non-melee damage taken by allies, so that can be useful in all sorts of ways in all sorts of places. They're also a flying unit, so they can get around the map very quickly. They can scout and reveal units much easier. Very handy to have in any army. They can as well be upgraded to be a Wave of Terror unit, this time increasing defenses instead of damage or attack speed like the other two Wave of Terror units. So very useful if you want to have them work together as a cohesive army with other units. Or you can take Diabolical Hunger, which will increase their movement speed and increase the range of their Spell Eater ability, which is just going to make that far more effective. Now onto the top tier units, beginning with the Grimgast Reapers. These are kind of like Chain Rasps, just better and stronger. 
They do have Reaping Charge, which works like any other charge ability, but once they've made contact, they do get a temporary aura that reduces enemy armor. So they're just going to be much better at killing all kinds of other enemy infantry. They're also another wave of terror unit that can increase attack speed. Then we have the Morngol, a big monster boy, great for wailing on all kinds of infantry, a little more on the defensive side though, except for its ghastly terror ability, which allows it to leap to a target location, so it will jump literally around the map. When it lands, it'll do a bunch of damage and also inflict fear on the enemy units that it hits, making them flee and run away in different directions for a few seconds. So a very nice problem for enemies to have to deal with. This unit has no upgrades. And then we have the Boat Boy, or his actual name, Ulrek the Drowner. A very strong melee hero, he has a charge ability which will damage and cause fear to units that it hits. And then these two abilities, one of them a teleport for him and ally units, which is pretty crazy, and also another one that will damage, stun, and bring down enemy flying units. So quite a nightmare for the enemy to have to deal with in many ways. Otherwise, very strong at taking on all kinds of enemies. The Boat Boy has no upgrades. All right, that's enough ghosts, time for some green boys. First up for the cruel boys, your tier one hero, the killer boss. This is a melee boy who likes to charge into battle with his charge ability, as well as these two other abilities, hacker swing, a kind of small AOE that will do damage and knock enemies flying all over the place, and all part of the plan, which will buff up your nearby infantry units in a bunch of ways. So ideally the killer boss wants to fight alongside his infantry to give those buffs, but he can be buffed up in his own right with a tier 1 upgrade fight like Mork, increasing his health and damage. A nice one to take early. He also has a tier 3 upgrade which will give him a great Nash Tooth mount, so basically a big wolf mount, which does allow him to get around the battlefield much quicker, although he does lose his hacker swing ability in the process. And then our first tier 1 infantry, the Gut Rippers, a core part of any Cruel Boys army. Good for getting after ranged units as they do have that shield, but not so good against other more damage dealer type enemy units. They don't have a charge ability, but instead they have scare tactics, which will allow them to gain some extra damage and also reduce the damage output of nearby enemy units. They can be upgraded with serrated stickers, which will increase their damage against ranged units, so make them even better against those, and increase their damage to monster enemies, making them kind of an anti-large unit. And then we have the Hobgrot Slitters. These are your more damage dealer type unit. They do have a charge ability, but they also have some tricks up their sleeves because they can actually lay mines, which when the enemies walk over them will do them some damage. Those can also be upgraded to do even more damage, so great if you want to set up some traps. But if that's not your style, you can instead turn those mines into grenades and they can lob those before they charge into combat, thus making them more of a kind of assault unit. And even more to that end, they have a tier 2 upgrade which will increase their damage against heavy units, just making them a much better damage dealer against more types of enemies. So some nice options with these little fellas. And then we have the Man Skewer Bolt Boys. These are your basic ranged unit option, but they do have an ability called Lion Weight which will make them hidden and increase their movement speed until revealed, and gives them a damage and attack boost when they are revealed. So they can be sneaky boys and set up some ambushes. One of their tier 1 upgrade options is Over Dare, which while hidden will allow them to instantly travel to a target location, which is only a small distance, but still that's nice for getting around. Or if you'd rather keep it simple, you can simply increase their range. They also have a tier 3 upgrade to give them damage over time on their basic attacks. So nice for just increasing some damage output. And then into the tier 2 units, you've got the Beast Skewer Killbow. This thing has great range and does a lot of damage to pretty much any kind of enemy, but is very slow and clunky to move, so we'll need some protecting potentially. But a great choice for covering a point from distance. It also has the skewered ability, which will fire a bolt, punching through all enemies, damaging and stunning them, so if you see two or three units lined up, you can hit three for the price of one. It can be upgraded to either increase damage against hero and monster units, or make it do area damage and slow enemies, making it a bit more effective against infantry. So you can tailor it to your needs to deal with whatever's going to be giving you the most problems. And then we have the Swamp Caller Shaman. This is your ranged hero. Not so good in the melee fight. He has the Summon Boggy Mist ability, which will make friendly units hidden. And when they are revealed, they'll get extra damage and attack speed. So another means to set up some sneaky ambush plays. He can also be upgraded with the Black Pit ability, which is basically an AoE that does damage to any enemies in it, also slows them and reduces their vision range. Or if you just like to make him stronger as a ranged hero, you can increase his damage and health. So some options with the Shaman. 
And then we've got a bit more of a unique boy in the Marsh Crawler Slogoth. While he can charge into melee and just get some damage work done in that way, he does have two pretty handy abilities. Spotter Crew, which will allow you to pick an area of the map and reveal everything that's there, and Catch in Nets, which will stun and literally pin enemies in place for six seconds. A great way to stop enemy units getting away before you kill them, or to protect your own units from bad matchups. Possibly their most useful skill though is Crew Drummer, which will allow you to reinforce your units, which basically makes them a healer of sorts, bringing your dead combatants back to life and also reduces the damage that nearby allies take. Or instead you could take the other upgrade option, which increases defense against all damage, so just turn it into a bit of a tank. Either way, lots of utility from this bad boy. And then we have the Merc Knob, who is a solo boy, but not quite a hero. Good for getting stuck into the melee, but he does have an ability, Breath of the Maya Drakes. This is a very strong cone-shaped AoE sort of attack, which does a lot of damage, slows enemies, reveals any hidden ones, and shields allies. Honestly, that's his biggest sell used as a damage attack on multiple units. It'll wipe them out quick. He has no upgrades. And lastly, our big boy, the Breaker Boss on Maya Brute Trogoth. Obviously a big damage dealer unit, great for charging into any kind of infantry fight, has a charge ability and the breaker harness ability which will deal damage to the Trogoth himself but does a small AoE damage all around him which just messes everything up in range. So if you charge him into a crowd and set that off, it's worth the health penalty. Alright, moving on to... Alright, onto the Stormcast with your tier 1 hero, Knight Vexilor. He wants to get stuck into melee, he can charge into that as well with the charge ability, but he also doubles up as a healer with Banner of the Reforged, where he can channel healing for 10 seconds and bring dead combatants back to life with Reinforce, so really one that benefits from fighting alongside allied troops, especially if you're going to take his tier 1 upgrade, Valiant Resolve, granting a shield to all nearby allies. Or if you'd rather use him as an independent solo hero, you can increase his health and damage instead. Then you have your tier 1 infantry, the Liberators. Good tanky boys, good for holding a position, not fantastic damage dealers, but more of a solid low tier infantry than most, especially because they have Sigmar's Aegis, a defensive ability that will give them a shield and armor for 30 seconds. They can be upgraded early, increasing their defense against all damage, making them even more tanky. A great choice if you want to make them a staple of your army. And then we've got the Vanguard Raptors Hurricane. These are your basic ranged unit. They don't have any abilities, but maybe have better survivability than most other low tier ranged units. But they can be upgraded and turned into Vanguard Raptors Long Strike instead, giving them a longer range weapon, so more range overall at the expense of damage. But potentially very useful on the right map in the right situation, they could cover a point well. Or instead, you could keep your Hurricanes and give them a barrage AoE attack. Good for pumping out a little extra damage when needed. And then we have Vanguard Hunters. These are a kind of dual role unit. They do have a short ranged missile attack and can get into melee and do well there. So you can use them either way. They do have the charge ability so they can do some extra damage in melee with that. And they have the Astral Compass which will allow them to reveal areas of the map so they can see what enemies might be lurking there. For their upgrades, one of them can give them the ability to go hidden and increase their movement speed, so making them into a stealthy unit, good for sneakily taking points or maybe sneaking up on some artillery to get rid of it, or you can make them into more of a frontline unit, increasing their defenses against all damage. So a pretty versatile unit overall. Into the tier 2 units, first off with Prosecutors. These are your big damage dealer unit. They can also fly, so great mobility for getting around the map. They also have a charge ability that they use from the air to do big AoE damage when they land. And they do have an air to ground attack Celestial Barrage, dishing out some damage and slowing units in a small AoE. So lots of damage to dish out in all kinds of ways with these boys. They can also be upgraded with defense to make them even tougher. Nasty lads. And then we have the Evocators, your more tanky support unit. They can get stuck into melee, but really want to do it alongside other troops because of their empowering aura ability. A big old AoE that will shield allies, give them extra armor and movement speed, and cause damage over time to enemies. They can be upgraded to increase the size of that empowering aura so you can cover more units with it. Or if you just want to keep it simple once again, you can increase their defenses against all damage. And then we have the Stormcast Artillery option, the Celestar Ballista. Very similar to the Killbow, it has that good long range, will damage everything pretty well. Very slow to move around though and might need some protection if things go after it. Can be upgraded to do more damage to heroes and monsters or upgraded to do more damage to infantry with explosive bolts. Again, really good just for covering points. If you can find some kind of high ground or firing platform, they can be really problematic for the enemy. 
And then we have the biggest of the chunky big boys, the Annihilators. These are kind of like the Liberators on steroids, but much better with the damage output. And instead of a defensive ability, they have a charge ability, which will knock enemies flying, do lots of damage, and also do some AoE damage around that area as well. So still mostly a tanky unit, but with a little more damage output this time. They have no upgrades though. And then we have the Storm Drake Guard. It's basically a big old dragon, great damage dealer of course, it's flying so it can get around the map quickly. It has a charge attack from the air as well which knocks things flying and does lots of damage. It also has a couple of breath attacks of course so you can do some fiery AoE damage. So just a great unit all round, great for destroying your enemies wherever they may be on the battlefield. It has no upgrades. And lastly for the Stormcast, the Lord Celestant, your big melee hero, your top tier 3 boy. A great damage dealer of course, has the charge ability, also has the Furious Retribution ability, which gives damage and speed buffs to nearby friendly units as well as unstoppable. So great if you're fighting alongside friendlies. He also has Call Forth the Storm, which is basically a massive AoE attack, lightning damage pain for all your enemies in the vicinity. So overall the Lord Celestant, just another means of putting out a lot of damage. For the Disciples of Zeech, our tier 1 hero, the Magister, a ranged hero, wants to stay out of melee combat using that ranged attack preferably, has the Gift of Zeech, a cone-shaped AoE damage spell that will pulse and damage enemies every time, but also heal allies if they're caught in it too, so a great support and damage ability. Can get an early tier 1 upgrade to increase basic attack damage and range, or if you want to lean more into that support ability, you can increase the healing and damage done by that Gift of Zeech ability. So a good hero in multiple ways from ranged, but a bit squishy and vulnerable up close. To help with that though, there is a tier 3 ability that will give the Magister a disc of Zinch, allowing them to fly and get around the battlefield more quickly or simply get themselves out of trouble. Then you have your low tier infantry, the Kyric Acolytes. These are a damage dealer type infantry, they have a charge attack, they may be a little bit more on the squishy side generally, but they can be upgraded to have a ranged attack, so pushing them into the dual role purpose. A little bombardment attack with magical arrows, so you can do some damage with that before you charge into melee to help them survive a little better. You can also get a tier 3 upgrade to that sorceress bolt spell, increasing the amount of bolts and the area effect and damage. So they can be useful in both melee and at range. And then your other tier 1 unit, the Horrors of Zinch, beginning with pink horrors which when they die will of course turn into two blue horrors, and when they die they'll turn into brimstone horrors which will explode in the enemy's face for a final bit of damage. They are your ranged unit choice however though, so preferably want to be doing that, but they can get into the melee although they're not going to be the toughest there, and do expect to be going through them because they cannot actually be healed and reinforced, so sometimes it's not worth retreating them. They can be upgraded at tier 2 to increase their attack range, allowing you a little bit more space between you and the enemies you're firing at, or you can increase damage of both ranged and melee attacks, so it depends how you want to use them. Potentially a bit more of a skirmishing missile unit. And then we have the Zangors, your slightly more tanky infantry choice. They can put out some damage, but mostly useful for being a holding unit and looking after those points. No abilities to speak of, so a fairly simple unit, but they can be upgraded at tier 2 to increase their movement speed and attack damage, making them a little bit better of a response unit. Or if you want them to be even better at holding points, you can give them Destined Mayhem, which will make them unstoppable and give them more defense, so they'll just be a little bit more tanky and hard to shake. However, this only works if they're within range of a hero unit, so with the Magister for example, they could work with them, they could protect the Magister and they can do their ranged attacks, while the Zangors hold things off. And then another tier 2 unit, the Screamers of Zinch. These are another damage dealer type unit. They can fly so they can get around quickly, they can scout, they can look for enemies. They also have Slashing Charge, which is an aerial charge ability. That'll do some damage and reduce enemy armor, helping them be a bit more of an effective damage dealer. They can be upgraded to gain a passive ability that will damage and slow nearby enemies. So again, more damage output with that. Or you can have Wailing Cry, which will cause fear, silence and reveal nearby enemies. So a bit more utility with that. Fear and Silence especially can be very useful in the right situations. And then we have the Flamers of Zinch. These are a ranged unit primarily, but they're not totally awful in melee. They do have an ability called Bounding Warp Fire, which allows them to jump to a target location, leaving behind a burning AoE of flames, damaging any enemies caught within it, so a good way for them to get to safety. They can be upgraded to increase their attack damage and range, making them a more effective ranged unit, or you can grant them the Touch by Fire ability, allowing them to summon a Warp Fire Ball at a target location, so more damage dealing output from that. Overall, you're stronger ranged choice than horrors. 
And then we have Zangor Skyfires. These are a ranged unit on discs so they can fly around, use a long range ranged attack. So they can dish out plenty of damage with that. They've also got the utility of flying, being able to get around quickly and spot units. So a great defensive turret type unit, if anything. They can be upgraded at tier three with judgment from afar, which will allow them to monitor a target location and fire upon enemies that enter that location. So basically a kind of overwatch. Further adding to them being a nice defensive unit. And then we have the Ogroid Thaumaturge. This is another dual role type unit. He's got a ranged attack, can do some good work with that, but he can also get stuck into melee. He has mighty rampage, so he can charge in, but he also has a magical AoE ability where he will summon arcane tendrils out of the ground, which will damage and slow enemies and also recover health for him for every enemy he hits. So plenty of versatility from this big boy. He also has no upgrades. And lastly, for the Zinch faction, the Lord of Change, AKA Big Bird. He's so big, I can't even fit him in the shop properly, but he's gonna be a strong melee hero with lots of potential damage to be done. He has these two abilities, Infernal Gateway. This is a massive AOE that does an absolute ton of damage over time. Anything stuck in this is probably dead. And then he has Rod of Sorcery, which is basically a small AOE ranged attack, good for dishing out even more damage. So like all the toppest of top tier units, he's just an absolute force to be reckoned with. He has no upgrades. So there we go, all the units in base game Realms of Ruin. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.